Well, hello everyone. It's been a long time, but I am finally in a position where I can continue producing high level quality side trans content for you. Okay, so today I want to talk about base and I want to talk about base phase um, and how you can get your base instrument more in phase with the kick drum of your track. Um, and we're going to just load in straight away, we're going to load in a kick drum. Now, normally, I'd recommend that uh, you roll your own kick drum. And there's several fantastic tools available to do that. But today, just for the sake of simplicity and getting on with it, I'm going to use a pre-made kick drum. Um, and I'm gonna go for a kind of more techno, techno y thing because it's a little bit more obvious what I'm uh, sort of doing about. So let's find a techno kick. Take your pick. <laughs> That'll do. That's quite a sort of 808 sounding kick, I'd say. Fine. Uh, and I'm going to set this up so the volume on it is like reduced. I normally run my kicks at about minus 12 dB. So let's just get this going straight away. And we're just going to go for a straight up techno kick. It's on C1. And I balls that up. Good. Excellent. There we go. So, so far, so simple. A nice 4 4 kick pattern. I'm going to maximize out the velocity on this because it just makes it slightly easier to work with. I'm gonna loop that. Right, I've got no idea what key the kick drum is in. Now people tell you and talk about key a lot of kick drums and it doesn't really make any sense because it's a sliding pitch shift. Now the majority of a kick drum will be at one frequency, which does make more sense. But even then it's not in a key, it's just playing on that note. So the easiest way to figure that out, potentially, is to open up a frequency analyzer. And span is free, and I think it's absolutely excellent. I jump around into edit, and slap this block size up to 16384, which will make it a lot more, uh, if you think of it as like aperture on a camera, and um, the more you increase this block size, the more it focuses on the base area of your signal. And it makes, um, you get a lot more treble information as well, but it's not particularly useful for treble. Uh, but for base, you wanna boost up that block size. And that's telling me that probably I'm looking at, um, Well, it's not really quite sure. It's a bit in between. Probably F sharp or G is what I'm working in with this kick drum. But I don't really know that until I actually try with the bass line. So I'm going to open up a reactor and quickly throw together a bass unit in blocks. And there's several things I can do um, that are going to help me establish exactly what sort of structured bass I want and how I can make that work more easily with that kick drum um, every time with any kick drum um, and any bass line. So I'm doing this in techno. Um, it can just as easily work in side trance. It can work in just about anything. Uh, drum and bass, you name it. It's all about getting your bass to be in phase with your kick. Uh, okay, so here I am. I have a blank reactor structure. And what I'm going to do, move them out a bit, and I'm going to start just dropping in uh, reactor blocks. Standard reactor blocks. Uh, so bento box, I'm going to want uh, a couple of VCAs actually. Um, I want a bento box oscillator. Uh, I want two bento box envelopes. From the boutique, I want 
nothing. <laughs> From modern, I want the pool filter. Um, and that's kind of a profit like filter. It's uh, a smooth four pole low pass filter. A little bit less squidgy than the Moog one. Um, a little bit more like a cascade filter. Um, so there we go. That's, I think it's great for bass. So I'm going to use that. I'm going to use a uh, note in. And that's going to respond to MIDI. So let's uh, set all that up. And there's one other little thing I'm going to do in here. Um, but we're going to do that afterwards. And so setting that up, I take from my note in utility, I take a pitch uh, and put it into the oscillator. I also put the pitch into the uh, pitch section, not the FM section, the pitch section of the filter. Um, uh, we're not going to connect the second amp just yet. That's going to come in a bit. Uh, from the oscillator, I run its output into my filter. I run a gate signal from the note in to the bento box. Did someone just go past? I'm not sure. Um, there was a shadow. I run a, from the note in utility, I run gate into the reset of the oscillator so I can control its note on phase uh, into the ADSR of the filter and the ADSR of the amp. And then I connect this modulation up. So that's the first ADSR goes into the filter. The second one goes into the amp. I run the output of the filter into the first amp. And then for now, I'm just going to run that into the output of the synth. So now I should have, or very nearly should have, a working little bass synth. And I'm just going to call that um, amp. Otherwise, when I switch around to the, the reason I'm renaming these is when I switch around to the panel view, it can become confusing if they're all called the same thing. So let's just get that working. It shouldn't take long at all. That's my spare amp, which I'm going to use later. I like to make this so it's kind of in the order that it happens. And I need to turn up that amp and set it to AC and uh, yeah, linear. And I make both of these logarithmic. Okay, so, and just for easiness' sake, I'm going to make that. We're going to go ultra simple and just have it as a simple one saw, one filter baseline. Cool. So let's uh, start writing that. And what I'm going to do is mute out this, and I'm going to make this baseline play on the beat at least once. That's way too high. Now I'm not gonna I seem to remember whether the kick was in F sharp or G and we're not gonna go for that. We're gonna go for A say. And let's just for argument's sake make that how it is. Okay, let's try that with kick drum. Well, there's not much of a bass patch yet. Let's make it slightly more of an actual bass patch. Not bad. Uh, just for argument's sake, let's put in a uh, scope on this as well, so we can actually see the waveform. And I'm going to use note on uh, as a signal to reset the scope. And if I move this around, you can see I can control the onset of the oscillator phase, which is very useful for what I'm going to be trying to be doing. Okay, 
Okay. But now... I'm kind of pretty good with that. Yeah. Let's try setting on the kick drum. And adjusting the volume. <laughs> Right, it's not too bad, but it could be a lot better yet. So I'm going to put on a, another oscilloscope and I'm going to put it onto my master output so I can see what's going on between the kick drum and the bass. Here we go. In fact, maybe I don't want that particular oscilloscope. Um, well, what I'm going to do make this slightly clearer is uh, I'm going to play just one beat of this and it's going to be the beat where the kick drum and the bass are on at the same time it's kind of a lot of interference you need good headphones to hear it but the bass frequencies are sort of fighting each other um, so let's have a look at well maybe we can see it in this scope I can't remember how to use it. All right, let's turn everything else off first. Okay, so you can see it's quite a distorted shape. And that's, um, that's the kick drum. Nice and simple. And that's the bass. I want to put them together, I'm getting a mess. <laughs> and now the easy way to sort that out, if I hadn't looked at my um, kick drum pitch already, the easy way to figure that out is just to use this transpose button here, assuming that your bass is restarting. And did you hear what it did there? It completely changed. The D's is almost like it's detuning against itself. And at that one, it no longer sounds like it's detuning against itself. So I can get this even better if I play with the phase of my bass oscillator. I'm going to keep that scope open. I'm just going to play with this knob here. That looks a bit better, doesn't it? And what you should be able to see, I'm hoping, is that by changing the phase of the bass oscillator, I'm actually changing the dynamic um the the headroom that I'm using. between the two channels when they're summed up. So doing this is quite literally allowing me to have a louder mix. And that's kind of giving me a crusty, really messed up attack. If I keep on working on it,
I should be able to get them to be just about perfectly in sync with each other. And just little changes can make huge differences. Now, the thing is, we actually don't want the bass signal from the kick and the bass playing at the same time. So those are those are in phase with each other, and there's not any kind of weird bass wobble from them being out of phase. And I'll demonstrate this is a bit easier to hear when it's all to all playing at once. And you hear it's actually kind of like a the pressure sounds wrong. Uh, anything other than minus two or octaves from minus two, it sounds like a it's a detuned oscillator. So the question becomes, what can we do about um, if we want to have a bass note playing at the same time as the kick drum? How can we alleviate the fact that it sounds much louder, um, which is the result of us getting our bass and kick drum in phase with each other is that they reinforce each other. Um, so it sounds right, but it also sounds much louder. And the obvious answer would be that we need to duck uh, the bass frequencies that we're generating in our bass synth from playing at the same time as the kick drum plays. Uh, now, typically that's done with um, multi-band compression uh, and sidechain multi-band compression, but that gets quite complicated. And I think there's a better way of doing it, which is one of the reasons why I made this bass and reactor. Uh, and to do that, we're going to do a tiny little bit of custom patch building. Uh, we're going to open up a new core cell. And people go, oh, core. Core's fine. Uh, and we're going to need, in the bento box section, we are going to need da, 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 one crossfade. No, we don't even need that. We just need this bento box. Uh, VCA and the core cell. Okay, so jumping into the core cell, we need one input. And obviously it needs to be an audio input. And don't worry, this really is gonna be super simple. We're just gonna use some stuff in the library. We need two outputs. And both of them need to be audio outputs as well. And we're gonna call one low pass and one high pass uh, and then in the library in audio filter Utterworth you'll find crossover filters uh, now these are not all equal and the problem with the uh, first one is that it rotates the phase of the uppers the high frequencies and low frequencies I'm going to be generating, it rotates the phase of them, um, which is not ideal for a baseline. <laughs> um, so I'm going to use this second one here, which is a two pole Linkwitz Riley crossover filter. And I'll just run the input to both the outputs. And the output, uh, the frequency of this filter is controlled at F and it's in Hertz. So I'm going to collect a new quick constant and I'm just going to make this 110. That may need a little bit of tinkering with. And I'll connect this to my sample rate. And that's that. And now I'm going to run that. Very quickly and simply. The low pass filter is going to go into this VCA here. And then the output from the high pass of it is going to go 
into this add here. So the LP is being controlled by this VCA. The HP and the output from that VCA go into an add, and then that just goes straight to the output. So now I have a volume control over just the low pass frequencies. And I'm just going to attach that to velocity. I'm going to call my amp here LP gain. Now it's important to note the only place I've used velocity in this patch is to control this VCA here, which is affecting the low pass signal. And I've moved that up now and put that there, which seems more appropriate somehow. And uh, turn up the modulation on that. Now, in the base patch, I now need to look at the velocities I'm using. So let's uh, put that right up, apart from that one which is on the beat. And you hear what it's doing? Let's have a listen. And let's go back and uh, check out that point where it's on the beat, just that one kick, and see what we can do. And we're not having a lot of phase issues there. That's not using masses of headroom up. But let's try shifting. Now it's going through that uh, Linkwitz Riley filter, and that will affect the phase of it slightly. Let's try shifting it and seeing what we can get. See, sounds really bad there. There's kind of an aggressive click. And there is really friendly in terms of gain. So I think I'm going to keep it there. And now on the two actually add up, they're actually reducing the game, <laughs> which is ideal. So, that's how you get your bass line and your kick drum to be in phase with each other. And I can play pretty much whenever I like. Let's do a cheesy little drum fill. Oh, I need to select all of them. And as long as I invert the output here, essentially uh, invert the velocity. As long as I invert the velocity of these notes, then I'm not going to have any problems because I don't need to sidechain it. 
what I'm trying to do is just control the, the amount of bass I have when the bass drum is playing. So there's no need for a sidechain to do that. You can just do it all using velocity. And that should sound pretty much fine, I think. Yeah, well, to be fair, I don't think the problems with the bass. I think it's more the patch there. <laughs> Let's try that at frequency. I'm not trying to make the best bass patch in the world here. I'm trying to give you a demonstration of how this works. Fine. So as I say, that is how you get your bass and kick drum in phase with each other, having a good phase relationship um, and controlling the amount of gain that your signal, your, your output from the two sum together will produce and make sure there's no nasty clicks and that you can play both at the same time. That's simple. I hope it's helpful. Thank you.